Palace going through a useful spell at the moment, but for this match they're without defender David Payne, who's got the flu, so young Martin Hinshelwood wears the number eight shirt. Mel Blythe at six is also back after flu, and Charlie Cook returns at number 10. So it's virtually a full strength side that now faces Stoke City. And they come with a side that gained a surprise 3-0 win at Derby on Wednesday night. It means that Dennis Smith, back after suspension, is only the sub, and Jeff Hurst, recovering from pneumonia, has to wait another week for his comeback. Watch out today, particularly for a taker and a maker of goals. The taker is the Crystal Palace star Alan Whittle, four in his last two games. And the maker, he comes for Stoke City, and it's the incomparable George Easton, commuting these days, it seems, between South Africa and Britain. The crowd, and there are a lucky 32,000 for this great game, waiting now for referee Tom Reynolds of Swansea to get it underway. And it's Crystal Palace who get us away, defending the goal to our left, in the white strip with the maroon and light blue stripe. Stoke City in red and white stripes with black shorts. A real four-pointer down towards the bottom of the first division as both sides struggle to keep a grip on their status. Palace lying 20th, Stoke 18th. Terry Conroy now for Stoke City. And Skeels turning it back to John Farmer. Cook. Good looking cross there by Cook. Posse! Oh, bad luck for Posse there. That was a lovely cross by Charlie Cook, and Posse, as he did so well for so long at Millwall, darting in on those near posts. Mel Blythe. Cook to Bell. Chase that, it says, to Don Rogers, and Rogers is chasing it. Touched inside there for Hinchelwood, is a chance, and a shot and a save by Farmer. Very nearly screwed it under Farmer's body from Martin Hinchelwood. Pedrick. Robertson, while well, he played that straight away. And now Rogers is away. Now this is the chance. Rogers against the goalkeeper. Oh, and he foozled it. Now against Manchester United here, he took those like bread and butter. And he foozled one against Sheffield Wednesday in the cup replay here as well. And he's done it again now. Alan Bloor. Again off the knees of Philip. Skeels to Easter. Conroy. Played again there for Mahoney. Good piece of running by him. That looked a bit like handball, but it's with Easton. A curler, a header, and a great save by Jackson from Ritchie. That looked as though it had to creep in just by the far post. But the green jersey of John Jackson hurtled across the goal to keep it out. Here's Rogers now for Posse. Time to tee it up and a fine goal! Posse! 1 0. Played beautifully through the centre of the field. And the pass as it came to Posse gave him time to pick his spot. And he picked it to perfection. So, nine minutes to go to half time. Derek Posse scores his third goal for Crystal Palace. Robertson again, turning it in. Blythe. There is tremendous coolness amongst that number five and number six in uh, the Crystal Palace defence, Blythe and Bell. Really do seem to have no nerves when they're under pressure in their own area. And here's Taylor getting out of a spot of bother well. Finding Rogers. Now Palace beginning to move. There's the pace again of Rogers. Tremendous acceleration and control. And a lovely pass again to Posse, which he couldn't quite control. But he's got Mulligan in support. Well, he'll get another chance. Played now this time for Mulligan. Hinchelwood. 
Mulligan. Pedrick is very close at hand, so Mulligan looks for another angle, finds it, Posse jumping, a back header and Marsh getting it away. Pinchelwood right in there. Played back for Phillip. And now once more for Mulligan. Crossed again for Whittle. Oh, a tremendous goal! Tremendous header by Whittle. A low cross, and Whittle found tremendous power for that header. 2-0. What a header. Cook. Oh, poor ball. Straight to Robertson. Philip just stabbing it away. Oh, but it's only gone to Mahoney now. Now with Robertson again. Marsh supporting him. Robertson's cross. And Bly's header away. But uh, this time Marsh. Palace not really getting this ball away. So Robertson gets another chance with a cross. Being forced wide and forced to Eastham. Quickening it up with the quick cross there. Floating in. Green off. And a goal! Jackson furious about it. And there was a deflection off one of his defenders. But the goal you've got to give to Jimmy Greenoff. And that really put Stoke City back in the game. 2-1 down. Let's put a little more enthusiasm into Stoke City's play as well. Whittle and uh, Ritchie having a maul on the ground there, but now Robertson with a chance to cross another deep one again towards uh, Greenoff. Conroy. Eastham on the outside again. But that time Mulligan being in again at the expense of a corner. Quickly taken by Eastham, and very well indeed as Pidgeot goes in, and Pidgeot goes in again. Hinchel with, with a chance to get away, to give relief to the defence. Rogers now, a touch on for Whittle. Played again for Rogers. Marsh is covering him. But now if Rogers can attack him, he might have a chance. He's got past Marsh, and now he's confronted by another. Rogers again, and a goal! Rod Rogers! again a little bit of daylight 3-1 Tony Waddington the Stoke manager in the suit there and a substitute coming on Dennis Smith Blythe oh nicely played ball there by Blythe to Hinshelwood and now with Whittle good control by Whittle lovely play Hinshelwood now to Mulligan Posse away on the right Towards the near post, a quick header again by Whittle. He's really beginning to enjoy his days now at Crystal Palace. Two goals last Saturday, two goals on Wednesday, a fine one today. Five in the last week. Robertson neatly going past the challenge of Charlie Cook. Green off. Played for Marsh. That's towards Dennis Smith and Bobby Bell looked as though he was going to leave that a little too late but he knew his timing all right and that goes behind for the corner <laughs> the linesman says Tony Taylor doesn't agree but Stoke have taken it and it's with Marsh and a great goal and a great goal there by Dennis Smith the substitute who came on as an out and out gamble when they took Richie off and the linesman getting a bit of booing on this side of the field now because the Palace supporters felt that it wasn't a corner from which the goal came. But the corner came over and Smith made the most of it. Robertson. And this game really hanging in the balance now. Tackling there well for Palace was Philip, but the ball still not out of play. And it's Conroy. Tackling gain of the right sort of order by Ian Phillip for Crystal Palace and now he's found Posse now Posse going past Skills Whittle in the middle Rogers on this side the short ball to Whittle can he do something with this 
Rodgers is also free, still with Whittle. One, Rodgers was absolutely unmarked on this side of the penalty area. Now with Whittle again. Still with Whittle. And now it's with Philip. And now it's with Cook. And still Rodgers is unmarked. And Cook trying one, a deflection, off an elbow, and nothing given. Well, the referee was pointing to his elbow, but he obviously saw no infringement. onto the roof of the stand with it, another throw to uh, Stoke City, and it's they who are doing more of the attacking now. Bloor coming up to add support for it, but Blythe cutting it out. Taking it one side of Bloor and running the other. Mel Blythe leading the charge now. Hinchel work. Now Whittle. Stoke with a lot of players back though. Still with Whittle. Now for Rogers. Crowd like that. And he's got his cross in as well! Very nearly pushed into his own goal by Farmer. When you give this fellow, uh, John Rogers, a little bit of rope, Farmer would, I'm sure, endorse it. You really are in trouble in defence. Now it's Rogers, with the crowd 100% behind Crystal Palace with their call. Curling in again, and against the crossbar, Whittle trying to get the rebound in, Posse too. Pitcherwood going in, and Stoke somehow or other getting it away. Still Cook, still Cook, still Cook, no, took it too close. What a tremendous game, Rogers, Hinchelwood, miscue. Well, they've had some tremendous games here at Selhurst Park this season, and uh, happily the big match has been here for one or two of them. But I really believe this one for sheer tension beats the lot because there is so much at stake for both sides. But now is to sound.